a while back we released an open source project called StateKit, which is uh, basically a really simple state machine that's uh, you know, extensible and dead simple to set up. We've gotten a lot of questions uh, about how to use it, and I think probably what happened is it is a little too simple, so it's confusing in its simplicity. So uh, we're going to make a couple tutorials uh, about using StateKit and, uh, and showing different ways that uh, how to go about using it. So the GitHub page is, uh, if you just search for Prime31, you'll find it. And uh, the README just uh, does a little explanation of uh, what StateKit is. And it's, it's essentially um, an implementation of the states as objects pattern for uh, design pattern buffs. But it's a, it's a real simple, extensible way to have multiple states in an object. And we'll explain all that in, uh, with, a, with a demo. So first thing we're going to do is uh, we'll, we'll do a demo for this one using, uh, using GUI, just for simplicity. For, uh, for the next one, we'll take it a little bit further and, uh, and show how StateKit can be used for all kinds of different stuff. But uh, a real common thing, pretty much every game has one. Is, uh, is some type of UI with a menu system. So uh, right here, this is just an example of, of uh, one way to do it. And uh, we're using on GUI for this demo just for simplicity's sake, but uh, absolutely urge you never to use on GUI in a real app. Uh, not until uh, 4.1 comes out at least and they get the new GUI system if it comes in 4.1, but that's a story for another day. So uh, here's a basic menu. So this is just going to be uh, really ugly just to demonstrate. So you have your main menu and maybe you have a link to a settings menu and maybe that links to some other menu and about screen and you can navigate around using the buttons. And uh, this is uh, the foolish UI. So this is, uh, let's take a look at this class here. So this is uh, a standard way to, to make menus. A lot of people do this for, uh, you know, to basically emulate a state machine. So you have a, an enum, which is just uh, what is the current menu, essentially. So we had a, a main menu, a settings menu, and some other menu. And uh, you just keep that in a private variable. And then in on GUI, you do a switch statement. And you run through your menus. And uh, whichever one is currently displaying is going to be the GUI calls that happen. And uh, you know, it's basic, real basic way to, to handle things. Now the problem with something like this is, if you want to add a new menu, you now have to jump up here and modify your enum first. And once you do that, you have to get in here and add another case statement. And you can see how just with a dead simple menu with just a button and a label, it's this gets pretty ugly pretty quickly. And uh, you know, pretty tough to read. And you know, sure there's some things you can do like extract this out and stick it in a method over here, something uh something like this and this will you know it'll help to clean things up a little bit but uh i mean in the in the long run this isn't uh isn't sustainable for a large project there so we have that switched over now and you can see that we get the same functionality it's a little bit cleaner but in reality if you have a lot of states then uh, then this gets ugly quick and uh, you know, state kit's made for not only just menus. It's it's a really generic solution. So uh, you know, one of the things we always do with it is uh, not only does it run our game, so we'll have states for our, our game, but we'll also uh, you know, in the instance of maybe a platformer, uh, we'll we'll actually have states for the platformer, and we'll we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So uh, let's turn off this uh, foolish UI here, and we're gonna implement this exact same menu except now we're going to do it using StateKit. So uh, this is what our, our UI class looks like now, and this is just the, the object, the, the only uh, mono behavior that's, on, that's currently active in the scene. And you can see straight off that this is orders of magnitude, easier to read, more simple. So first thing we do is we make a state machine. And this is a uh, standard StateKit state machine. And the way it works is uh, it, it takes in an object here that is going to be uh, your context essentially. So in this case, uh, we're just throwing in a menu model. In the case of a platformer, this might be your controller script. And uh, you know, in the case of say AI, for example, you might have uh, you know, your your enemy be what you're passing in as the context. And uh, it's essentially what the state machine is going to operate on. So in the start method here, all we do is we create a new menu model 
and then we create the state machine. So the way we create the state machine is uh, we're using generics here. So you just pass in like what is going to be the actual context class. In this case, it's menu model. And then you pass in your first state. So the states as objects pattern basically separates your states out into classes. And you can see over here, what we have is uh, this is our menu model class. And here are our states. So we have main menu state setting state and some other menu state. And these are gonna be equivalent to basically these. So settings, this code right here is gonna be separated out now into that setting state. And this code over here is gonna be separated out into the some other menu state. So now all we have to do in on GUI is call the update method. And let's just have a quick look at the SK state class. So this is an abstract class, and it, uh, it contains just a few methods that you need to implement uh, these abstract methods, basically. So you have a begin method, you have an end method, and update. And uh, you know, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory. Begin's going to be what gets called when you enter the state. End is what gets called when you exit the state. And then update will be called every single time on GUI is called. So let's have a look at our main menu state. Okay, so we're actually going to add a little bit of, uh, of pizzazz to that menu we saw before. It wasn't animated or anything, and mainly just because the, the code would have gotten so complicated. To If we were to actually start adding animations into this, it would just be beyond un, unmaintainable. So uh, now that we're switching over to StateKit, though, everything gets a lot simpler, so we can go ahead and, and add some, uh, some animations. So what we're going to do here is, uh, our, remember our context, is the menu model class. And uh, the menu model class is really simple. It contains pretty much just a couple, uh, a couple parameters up here, the main menu X position. This is gonna be what we animate. And the is in transition Boolean. This basically will be true whenever there's an animation happening and false when it's not. Uh, we're gonna use GoKit in here as well. And GoKit's also available, freely available uh, in either the asset store or you can get it directly from our GitHub repo. And uh, GoKit just uh, makes tweening objects and animations really simple. So we'll, uh, we'll look at this method in, uh, in a moment. But let's get back to the main menu state. So in begin, you can see what we're going to do is animate the position basically to the center of the screen. And then in our update method, uh, we're now just, uh, if we're in transition, we're not going to show any buttons. But if we're not in transition, we'll have that settings button present. And when the settings button is clicked, we're now going to do an animation. And when the animation is complete, we're going to change state. And this is all you have to do uh, with GoKit to change state is you'll just uh, you'll call change state and pass in the class that you want to change to. So uh, in this case, we're changing to the setting state, which is just another class. So let's go ahead and have a look at what this looks like. Okay, so you can see we animated in main menu, and when we push this settings button, what we're going to do is animate the position out, and then once the animation is complete, change to our setting state. So we click the button, and we can see we get the animation in and out, and now we're in the setting state. And we have a back button here, and the back button does what you'd expect. It just goes back to the main menu state. So let's take a look at that setting state now. Okay, so again, in the, in the begin method, we're just going to animate the position and we're going to put it into the center of the screen. And this, uh, this position is, is just this. It's the main menu X position. If you remember, our, our uh, menu model had this main menu X position. And we made that a property so that it's, uh, it's really uh, simple to access so that we can handle the animations here. And we have two buttons here and they're exactly the same as our previous buttons. We just, uh, when, you get, when it gets clicked, we do an animation, and when the animation's complete, we change state. So we'll just have a look through here, clicking through. And you can see we have uh, fancy little animations all here. And of course, in the real world, you would have uh, a much nicer looking GUI than that. But this uh, you know, gets the job done for explaining how things work. So uh, let's have a look at this one last class. So, they're all extremely similar, as you can see. 
and uh, you know we have an update method here again and this gets called every time on GUI is called we have the settings button when clicked we do an animation and then we change state so the, the power of a of state kit now comes in the case where we want to add a new state so let's say uh, our menu uh, we just got a, got word back from our designers that we need another menu so this is all it takes so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna make other menu so let's open up this file and the basic way you're gonna make any of your states is you have to inherit from this class so it's gonna be the SK state and then your context class so all you do we inherit from that and if we remove everything and go back over here you'll notice we get a couple complaints and it's because we haven't implemented the abstract classes or the abstract methods in here and we can actually just let mono develop do that for us we don't want to throw exceptions on these so we'll get out of here okay so we'll just mimic um, kind of like what we did with the setting state so when when we begin so this is when we enter the state we're just going to animate our label into the center of the screen so we need a label now to, to animate so let's we're just going to copy paste this in here because we already have it so this will be other menu and uh, we'll want a, a button so that we can go back so let's uh, let's stick a button in here Okay, so that's it. This is uh, we now have uh, we just added another state. All of our logic is separated in in its own class, so that it's it's uh, it's all contained and really easy to modify. So now you know if other menu is what you want to be changing, you don't have to you know dig through this mess over here to to modify it. You have each of your states is is separate and totally self-contained. So now we just need a uh, a way to actually get to this menu. So let's uh, let's stick another button in here, and we're just going to call it other menu. Uh, we need to move it somewhere so that it's out of the way. So we'll move it to the right a little bit, and uh, you know for this one, let's not do an animation. Let's just change state directly. So we're going to call change state and change to other menu. So let's, uh, we should get our compilers cleaned up and here we go. We're in main menu, we have another menu button. When we click this, we're just going to change state to other menu. So it's, uh, when we change settings, you see we animate out the main menu. We're just going to do a direct change on this one because we didn't do an animation. So it's just going to flip to other menu. And that's all there is to it. So now we can go back and go to main menu. That's state kit in a nutshell. You know, it's, uh, some of the uses, uh, some of the things we've used it for are, we use it for our, um, we have one state machine. That, uh, it's important to note that you, there's no rule that says you only have to have a single state machine. You can have as many of these as you want. So we'll have one state machine that runs our actual game. So it'll always know what level we're in and uh, it can change levels and, and drop back to the menu. That'll handle our, our menu state. And then, uh, you know, in the as a platformer example, we'll have... Uh, a state for our platformer character and uh, our state machine for our platformer character and uh, the way we work that to keep it really nice and simple is each state is going to essentially be uh, an action that the, the character can do so in the case of a platformer we'll have a jump state a falling state a hit state for when he gets hit by a bullet or an enemy and each of those states completely separates the logic so that now we can you know control our animations so for instance when we jump and we enter the jump state, we're going to want to do a couple things. We want to change our animation to the jump animation, and we'll want to uh, apply some type of force up. So this this is a, a great way to, to simplify your code. So now your your character can, has, uh, has the ability to jump, has the ability to fall, has the ability to get hit. If you want to add new abilities like wall jumping, then you just add a new state for it. And it, it keeps your code really nice and clean, allows you to add and remove states at will, and uh, you don't end up with uh, with any crazy switch statements like this that are really hard to read. All right, thanks for watching.